Five steps to be a good Samaritan. We got to help people. We got to love people. And a good Samaritan is a great example. Got five tips for you from that story to help you help people and have more joy and satisfaction inside whenever you help others while we're here. So I'm Josh, preferablelife.com. Let's get into it. So the Good Samaritan, I'm sure you know the story of Jews and Samaritans didn't like each other. A Jew was hurt. The Good Samaritan helped him, bandaged his wounds, put him up in a hotel and took care of his needs and healed him, basically. So we're going to go through some things that he did so that you can help others as well. Number one is to see humans as humans, to get rid of all this race difference, preference difference, style difference, geographic difference, all of these difference and segmentation things that are dividing us. And we got to look at people as people. We got to see them as brothers and sisters, see the human race as amazing because it is, it's beautiful. And the difference is so minute in really anything. So you got to, got to see people as people, got to, got to see them as humans, see them as brothers and sisters. And that was the first thing that he did was he he threw away all of the, the the rules that said, don't talk to, don't take care of this person because they are of a different lineage. We got to get rid of that. Number two is we have to have physical band-aids. So he had a pack of first aid kind of kit on his donkey or whatever. And so he was prepared for probably to take care of himself. And he had a physical band-aid thing so that he could mend this wound, heal this wound. And I, I want to take this conversation a little bit different than band-aids. So we all have a scratch to itch. We all have a uh, hobby interest desire. And you are prepared to bandage, to fix, to heal, to help a, a lot of people that have these problems with depression and with anxiety and with fear and with how to woodworking struggles. That is the physical band-aid of today. We don't really have, at least in most America, we don't have super big problems stifling our wounds. We can just go to a, a doctor and that that's, that's a little different today. But today the band-aid, the thing that is inside of you that you always need to prepare, be prepared for is marriage. It's how to have a good marriage, how to help someone through a marriage struggle. So what, what is it that you have on hand? What is it that you are prepared to take care of and to help and to steward and to lift people up and to, to solve, fix their problems? You got it inside of you. Dial it in. Number three is prior skills and know how to use those band-aids. So if you have this thing and you don't know how to use it, then it is useless. And so you have to delve into, you have to every day really fight and show up for the, the band-aid solution thing that you have inside of you to take care of people. We got to carve into and craft into and develop and nurture those skills and those emotional healings and those physical healings and those things that are inside of you. We got to become the best at them so that we can help people whenever the need and the sign shows up that we need to take action and and bandage this wound that is in front of us. Carve into and be prepared. You're, you are the best. You have a created best. Number four is have cash on hand. Man, this is tough. We, especially in church, we have a poverty. I need to be poor because Jesus was poor. I'll put a link to a podcast that changed my life on this conversation. Prosperity versus poverty mindset. The having cash, having money can be wrong, can be a struggle, can be a idol, can be a attachment. But if you're, if you're real and you tap into being a good Samaritan, man, cash is something that will give you the ability to help so many more things than you could help without it. We have to want to make money, not to impress or to please or to give us the coolest pool on the block or whatever, but 
man, the shift for the earth, the nurturing, the gardening, the stewarding of people that we can that we can do with cash is crazy huge. He had money and he let it let it go for for this needs of this person and that's where me and you can get to is whenever we see people as people and we don't hold on to the cash but we use the cash. We spread it around like well Dave Ramsey talks about it in investing that if you spread it around it grows stuff. But if we spread it around with people and missions and things, man, it grows stuff. Not just for your financial future, but for the earth, the the well being of people. Number five. This one's I don't know, four and five are both really, really hard. Leave me a comment below. Let me know which one of these is hard for you. Number five, take time out of your way. People over agenda. Man, he had a place that he was going to. And this nurturing of the wounds and the dropping off at the hotel and the spending of the money to take care of his food and, and sleep, those took him away from the agenda, from the thing that he was on. And he, he, he paused. He stopped. This one's hard. We are hustle bustle. We are go, go, go. We very rarely take time for others and very rarely have the ability to do that. So hope these things help you to be a good Samaritan. I need you sometimes. Other people need you sometimes. And you have a very special, unique DNA healing thing inside of you. That's what we're talking about here on Preferable Life is figuring out what that is so that you can bring the shift for the earth that's ordained for you to bring. I'm Josh Preferablelife.com. This helped you out. Hit the thumbs up. Hit subscribe. I want to help you dial in your DNA, become your creative best, and find your purpose. That's why we're here. Catch you on the next one.